my second video in the series about muscles and today we're going to look at the sliding filament theory. And so from the last video you can probably remember we finished off by looking at the structure um, of a single myofibril and we looked at um, the difference between the actin and the myosin filaments um, that you can probably see labelled here. So the myosin are the ones in purple and the ones in red here are the actin filaments. Um, here are some of the structures that we have to know about before we can move on to how the muscle itself actually contracts. And so um, this structure here called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it's very much like the endoplasmic reticulum um, found within normal cells. And usually when you see the word sarco on the front of a word, it refers to muscle. Um, the job of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is it's basically a store of calcium um, or calcium ions, which are required for uh, muscular contraction. And you have these T-tubules which permeate um, throughout uh, the muscle fibre and throughout the myofibril, sorry. And so they can deliver the calcium ions to the different areas that require them. Now you can probably remember from last time we looked at the thick filament, which is the myosin, and the thin filament, which is the actin. Um, if we take a, a closer look um, at both, so if, particularly if we look at the actin first, um, you can see that the actin filament has actually got something wrapped around it. Um, and those two things are the troponin and the tropomycin. Um, and those are things which actually prevent um, the actin and the myosin from binding to one another and those physically need to be moved out of the way so in order for the actin and the myosin to interact. If you look at the thick filament, um, particularly um, this diagram here and if you look at the myosin molecule you've, what you've got is a myosin head here and this is the thing that physically attaches um, to the actin and so that's the thing that actually causes the pull um, that actually connects the two filaments together and therefore causes the muscular contraction and what we're going to do is we're going to go through how that actually comes about. And So the first thing what happens is you want to stimulate a specific um, myofibril or a specific group of muscle fibres um, and so there's a nerve that connects um, to each muscle fibre and so you can see that labelled here and so there's an impulse being sent from the brain um, essentially to command the muscle um, to contract and when that impulse arises, it's an electrical impulse it causes the release of a chemical or um, it causes the muscle fibre to, to be stimulated and what this does is it causes the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum um, and so these calcium ions are then released and they're then able to flow through those T-tubules which we looked at earlier and so they can permeate throughout the myofibril and so they can actually get to the actin and myosin. Now what it actually does, the calcium ions, is if you remember back to the previous diagram I, I showed you a picture of a tropomycin and a troponin that surrounded the actin filament and specifically what the calcium does is it binds to those and physically moves it out of the way so you can see here um, this is in the resting state so this is before the calcium is present um, and now the calcium has flowed in it's, the calcium has physically moved um, the troponin and the tropomycin out of the way of the binding site for the myosin head and this now means that the myosin head is now free um, to bind to the actin filament. So without the calcium ions present, this wouldn't happen. And it is in fact these myosin heads that actually pull the actin inwards. And so obviously if the tropomycin and the troponin are in the way, the myosin head can't bind, so it can't physically pull um, the actin filament um, inwards. And so we'll go through step by step how that myosin head actually um, connects and so the calcium ions are released and so therefore the myosin head is now free to bind. Um, these thin filaments referring to the actin can now move to the middle of the sarcomere and if we look at this diagram showing how this works so all this diagram is showing is the calcium ions moving the troponin and the tropomycin out of the way of the binding site for the myosin head which is represented here. Now obviously um, this is a much scaled down version um, diagram and so there are thousands upon thousands of these myosin heads um, on a single myofibril. And so now the um, tropomycin, the troponin, is moved out of the way, the myosin head is now free to bind onto um, the actin filament. This then, um, after this attachment, this then causes a power stroke. And so what happens is the myosin head changes angle and physically pulls the actin filament um, towards the centre um, 
of the sarcomere. What you'll also notice here is you'll see that the AT or the ADP and the phosphate group are now released um, from the myosin head. Now, what's got to happen here now is in order for this to continue, this movement to continue towards the sarcomere, you want this myosin head to detach. And so essentially that's the next thing that happens. So the chemical ATP is then cleaved onto um, or attached to the myosin head and is then broken down by a specific enzyme called ATPase. So ATP is the thing it breaks down, A's implies that it's an enzyme. Um, and what that does is that detaches the head um, from the actin filament. And so now we're back to our original position with the ADP and the phosphate group attached to the head. And that can now rebind further down the actin filament again to then pull it along. The ADP and the phosphate group is then released. And then to detach the head, ATP is attached to the myosin head. That gets broken down uh, by ATPase into ADP and the phosphate group. And so this cycle continues. Um, this is sometimes called, um, referred to as the sliding filament theory. Um, the ratchet head movement um, is also a term that's commonly used here. Um, and so you get this entire cycle that continues onwards and onwards until you have essentially no H zone um, and the I band has gone to its minimum and the sarcomere length is at its minimum as well. And so what you've produced there is a muscle contraction. So what that has now done is that's caused the muscle fibre to contract um, and the actin filament has pulled right towards the centre line um, of the sarcomere. And so what you end up with is a muscle fibre contraction and therefore the tension within the muscle has increased. And that is essentially how you produce um, a muscular contraction.